just like the mad and brilliant Dr. Frankenstein, I need to tackle a few taboos to give my guests a truly monster munch. Frankenstein's monster looked like a man, so here is the replica skeleton that would be the plate for my dish. I now need to make the food to bring my monster to life. First, I'm going to make my monster's spinal column. I'm using hearts of palm which look just like bones. I'm hollowing them out, then I'll bake them. Next, I'm going to fill my vertebrae with a savoury mousse. It's basically like a horseradish, red wine and mushroom marrowbone replacement. This is going to add a bit of backbone to my monster. I need a bit of meat to bulk up the dish. So, here, I've got some short ribs of beef. So what I'm going to do with this is salt it for an hour and a half and cook it for a little bit of time. Nothing too long, just three days. 72 hours to be exact. Cooking it like this will keep it moist and pink and very tender. And I'm going to place it between my monster's rib bones. Right, now to the essence of my Frankenstein. My monster needs to have a brain. I'm using calves brain because it has a very delicate flavour to make fritters by mixing it with savoury shoe pastry. Right, in true Dr Frankenstein style, I'm now going to blend my brains. So I got a little bit carried away there. Oh, I don't know what came over me. After deep frying them, I squeeze my brains back into the skull. Finally, recording the surf and turf origins of my monster, I put a marabone and anchovy filling into my skeleton's limbs. So here is my Frankenstein-inspired Heston's monster.